Hello everyone, welcome back to Steam Code and welcome to another episode of our AVR assembly tutorial series. In this video, we're going to begin using simple commands to manipulate the different registers and the data within our device. So the device that we are simulating today is the AT Mega 2560, like I mentioned in the previous tutorial, and let's just jump right into it. So we're going to need to use our debugging feature within Microchip Studio. So click on debug, start debugging and break. Now, if this is the first time you've debugged on this project, this window will show up. So you're going to need to select a connected tool and interface. So right now you can, under the selected debugger slash programmer, you can select simulator and then just save this file and head back to main.asm. So now that we're in main.asm, let's try this again. Debug, start debugging and break. And as you can see here, a processor status window shows up and you can see the stack pointer, the XYZ register, the status register, the cycle counter, the crystal frequency, the stopwatch, and all of the general purpose registers. Let's just pin this window to the side for now since we're going to be looking at it. And let's just jump right into it. So stop the debugging and now we can start looking at some basic commands. So these commands will make more sense if you have a basic understanding of the computer architecture. So let's just go over a few basics. So there are two kinds of memory inside of AVR, the code memory space and the data memory space. Within the data memory space, we have the general purpose registers of which there are 32, the IO memory and the internal data SRAM. So as I mentioned before, there are 32 bytes of data memory space for the general purpose registers. And the address locations in memory are from 00 to 1F. Now for IO memory, these are dedicated to specific functions and they're made up of 8-bit registers, same as the GPRs. And there are at least 64 bytes of IO memory on any given AVR device. And there's extended IO memory for more peripherals. Now moving on to the internal SRAM, it's used for storing data and parameters by AVR programmers and C compilers. And each location of the internal SRAM can be directly accessed by its address. So now let's begin using some commands to manipulate the data within these different spaces. So the first command we'll use is load immediate which is LDI. And what LDI does is it loads values into general purpose registers. So you pass the register. So say we want to use register 16, and then we'll pass the immediate value that we want to load into that register. And it can go from zero to FF. So let's say two F. And we know that this value is in hex because we have zero X before the value you want to input. If you want to input a decimal value, you'll just put the direct number, so five for example. If you want to input a binary value, you'll put zero B, and then the bi binary value that you want to input. So we'll use OX2F to load immediate into R16. The next command we'll look at is the add command. Now the add command will add the contents of two registers and store them within the first register that was passed. So let's add the contents of R16 and R17. And we'll run all of these commands once we're done writing them out so you can see the exact functions of them. Now before we add R16 and R17, let's just load R17 with a value of one. Okay. And the next command is the move command or MOV. Now this command copies data among the GPR registers of R0 to R31. So with this move command, let's copy the value that's stored within R17 to R18. Now for the next command, 
let's subtract. So we have sub for subtract. And same as the add command, it stores the product of the, or it stores the result of the arithmetic operation into the first register that's passed. So if we have sub R16, R18, it will perform the operation of R16 minus R18 and store the value within R16. And there are many other arithmetic operations that you can also perform, such as MUL for multiply, AND for AND, and then XOR, and the other arithmetic operations that are standard to binary. We're not going to go over each of them, but I want you to know that they exist. Now, another command that we'll be using is INC, which increments the register that we pass to it. Now, unlike these previous commands that we've already seen, this one will only take one parameter, which is the register that we want to increment. So after, after R19 has been incremented, it will have a value of just one more than it had before. The next command we'll look at is the COM command, which performs the ones complement of the values within the register you pass to it. Now, if you do not remember what the ones complement is, it basically inverts each of the bits within the register. So if we perform the ones complement on R20, then the result will be OXFF because R20, without anything being stored within it, has the value of OX00. So once the ones complement of OX00 has been performed, the value is OXFF, since all of the zeros turn into ones. Now, as I mentioned before, there are three different areas within our data memory, the IO memory, the internal SRAM, and the GPRs. So these these next few commands will show you how to interact between the internal SRAM and the GPRs. So the first command of this that we'll look at is LDS, which is which stands for load direct from data space. Now what this will do is when you pass a register, so let's say R16 to LDS, you also must pass an address of the SRAM. So let's say OX00. Now what this will do is it will load R16 with the value of the OX00. Now remember that the value that it loads R16 with is not the address that you pass to it. It's what's stored at that address within the internal SRAM. That's an easy point of confusion for many students, so make sure you remember that. The next command we'll look at is ST, is basically the opposite of LDS. It stores direct from data space. So it will store a value within the address you pass that comes from the register that you pass it. So this time let's say R17. And the next two commands are actually very similar. We have out and in. In from I.O. location will tell the GPU to load one byte from an I.O. register to the GPR. So we can say in to R21 OX01 and then out to OX3E, the value that's stored within R21. Now, in and LDS are very similar, but the in instruction has the following advantages. The CPU executes the in instruction faster than LDS. The in instruction is a two byte instruction, while LDS is a four byte instruction. And also using the in instruction, we can use the actual names of the IO registers instead of their address. And also in is available within all of the AVRs, whereas LDS is only implemented in some of the AVRs. So when creating your AVR assembly code, make sure you know which device you're using and weigh the benefits and the cons of using different commands so that you know it works the way you intend it to.
All right, so now let's just run this code and let's see how it works in real time. Let's go back to debug, start debugging and break. And as you can see, we're on the first command. So let's step over it. Right now we're trying to load R16 with OX2F. If we scroll down to R16 within the processor status window, we can see that it's now loaded with the value of OX2F. Now let's load R17. It's been loaded with OX01, perfect. Let's add the two together and store them within R16. As you can see, they've been added and stored within R16. Now let's move the value from R17 to R18. Sorry about that. We're actually moving the value from R18 to R17. So as you can see, both R17 and R18 are now zero. Now let's subtract R18 from R16 and store the value within R16. As you can see, it stays the same since R18 is zero. And let's increment R19. Now R19 is one. Now let's find the complement of R20, which should be OXFF. As you can see, that's become OXFF. Now let's go down to our data XRAM so we can actually see what's loaded into the value, what's loaded into address OX00. So we're loading from R16 into, or we're loading from OX00 into R16, which should just be zero. Now, as you can see, R16 has been set to zero. Now let's store the value that's within R17 to OX00, which is also zero. And let's take in the value within R21, what's stored within OX01, and the same for OX3E and R21 again. Now, since these were zeros, you weren't really able to see what was stored within what. So let me change a few of the values around so we can run this again a little faster and see it actually working in real time. So for this move command, let's just switch R17 and R18. All right, and that should, we should also, let's just change this. We'll send that out from R20. And let's just change the address to OX20. All right, let's stop the debugging and let's just run it again. And let's also change this to zero. So we're looking at the proper address. Okay, let's run this again. As you can see, we're being loaded with all the values that we need to. And you can also see the data changing in real time, because as you will remember, the values of or the addresses of the general purpose registers are located in the memory from 00 to 1F. Let's keep on running it. As you can see, it's all changing in real time. And that's how you use these basic commands. So play around with these commands, see what types of programs you can make with them. In the next video, we'll start going to a little more advanced commands, a little different commands. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. This has been Steam Code, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.